The safety for everyone philosophy really hits home when the vehicles that we develop here gets into the hands of, of my daughter and my son. We're in the control room right now in our crash barrier, and I'm the manager of the crash safety department here at Honda R&D. This lab was commissioned in 2003, and we run about 200, 225 full-scale tests right here in our lab. This is the final stop in our development process. This is after we've done thousands of simulations and thousands of sled tests, component tests. This is the final stop before those vehicles get into the hands of the customers. What we're sitting on is a 90 metric ton concrete block that's our impact barrier, and it can rotate 360 degrees and is very efficient. So one day we can do a test, rotate at 90 degrees and do a different impact, a different barrier type test. So very state of the art. On any given development, we might do 30 different types of tests here in this lab. And we're actually able to take information we learn from real world crash, real world, how people are getting hurt in the real world and replicate that in here in our lab and do experiments and to be able to protect those occupants so when they go out in the real world and get into a crash, we can develop safety features here at R&D. The old notion that the bigger car, the safer car, well, that's not always the case. It's all about energy management and the design of our ACE body structure, the multitude of frames and load paths to dissipate that energy and how we get that energy in that crush zone away from the occupants. So bringing that energy down away and underneath the occupants, taking your engine and dropping it down and away so it doesn't intrude into the lower leg area. Those sort of things is what really makes the ACE body structure very valuable. So that same methodology is applied across the board. Where we're headed right now is is a perfect direction of both active safety and passive safety. I think they're gonna be needed together for quite a while where you know the passive safety side of, of what we do heavily relies on, on some active safety systems, being able to dissipate that energy in a potential collision. Slowing that car down five, 10, 15 miles an hour is a huge energy savings and really puts a lot of less burden on the passive systems. And with advancements in airbag and safety restraint technologies, as well as different materials, different aluminum, maybe those sort of lightweight materials, the advancements and the opportunities will be there for years to come. On a personal level, I have two drivers that are in my household, my daughter and my son. Of course, they drive Honda vehicles, but to be able to take that knowledge, that experience that we've learned here at Honda by doing what we do and applying that to a personal level to my family members, right? And making sure that, that they're safe. They're always wearing their seatbelts. They understand how the systems work so that they can understand that. And the education is key. It means that much more in, in doing the right thing for our customers and for my family. I did all my education in India, then I moved to United States and did my master's in mechanical engineering. That's when I got exposed to safety engineering and simulation. When I started in 2003, I directly was recruited in the simulation department as an engineer. So from day one, that has been my job at Honda to do simulations and to improve the safety of our vehicles. The simulation technology has vastly improved in the last two to three decades. Originally, the whole intent was to just use simulations to check design A versus B versus C and to check your designs. But today it has come to a stage where you can get an absolute answer before you run any physical crash test to say if you meet all your requirements. So that way, the simulation technology evolved vastly where all the physics can be greatly captured to get the right answer. The safety for everyone concept that Honda has been following over the last few decades is on a very strong concept that puts the customer at the focus point. So it kind of helps us drive our designs in making our cars much safer and better because we are not only talking about protecting the driver, but we are talking about all the occupants in the car and those outside the car so that we can protect them. I think we'll continue to evolve and grow and take on the key challenges that we have with the new kind of electrification of our vehicles. So we have new challenges to protect our batteries and how we evolve those kind of simulation models. Now we answer the major questions, but in terms of safety, we have next level of details on protecting external things like the pedestrian safety and all these things. So we, our, our focus has been trying to improve all these techniques and make simulation more robust and get the right answer. 
I interviewed with both a body design group and a safety group, but I thought, you know, crash testing cars would be super exciting, and that was the direction I went. I went to school at Kettering University in Flint, Michigan. I studied mechanical engineering, and I have always had a passion for automotive engineering. I've always been into cars. What better place to end up than Honda? Today we're in the pedestrian impact lab. In this lab, we actually do component level tests to simulate the different parts of a pedestrian's body as it would be impacted by a vehicle on the roadway. One of the most important component tests that we run is a head impact test. The largest number of fatalities with regards to pedestrian impact is related to head injury. We are conducting this test to understand the energy absorbing characteristics of the vehicle. There's considerable challenges with protecting pedestrians with regards to the styling and balancing. So you can think about it like a sedan or a sports car. The stylist would prefer to have an extremely low hood, but we have to find the right balance where we can maintain enough crushable space or energy absorbing space between hard components in the engine room, like the engine or some suspension components. We've been adding pedestrian protection systems for years now. For example, we've, we're one of the first to help develop breakaway wipers so that in the case of a pedestrian impact, the head would come down and hit something very rigid would break away, so it would help dissipate that energy. I think pedestrian safety is one of the core principles that's wrapped up in the safety for everyone philosophy because, again, we're not only focusing on the occupants inside our vehicles, but we're also considering the pedestrians and the cyclists that are vulnerable to the traffic on today's roadways. My work at Honda, I definitely think about my family and how these types of decisions that I make at work could potentially influence them in the real world. One of the most rewarding things for me working in Safety Group is when we receive letters from our customers, you know, and that gets shared to, you know, our safety department, but it really hits home because they're driving the vehicles that we spent years to develop and we know that we've had a positive influence on their lives.